it's always a mixture of feelings when we're about to get on the road. Joy, happiness, expectations, anxiety, you name it. On August 25th, we set on the road again. This time around, our destination was the Cross River National Park, which is about 900 to 1,000 kilometers away, depending on which road we took. We had looked at Google Maps and we had decided the route. We had never been on those roads, but we were just going to follow Google Maps and see where it took us. So we set out, checked our tire pressures, checked everything else to make sure we were ready for the road. Looks good. Feels good. Road travel in Nigeria can be very challenging. But because we are bikers and we are adventurers, we choose to ride Nigeria by road. Because we feel this is the way for us to truly experience Nigeria. From the good roads, to the bad roads, to the traffic, all the challenges that we face on the road constitute what we consider the knowledge and the experience of our country. Um, I came on this ride because we're, we're, we're now embarking on like trips to our assets, the national assets, the national parks. We've been to Kainji and then we just said, you know, let's go to Cross River National Park. And when we decide to make a, to go on a ride like that, we go on the ride. <laughs> we just go. I decided to come on this adventure to experience something different, to see Nigeria, to see Nigeria from west to east. Also because I've only traveled around uh, the west part of uh, Nigeria. So this was uh, maybe the best opportunity for me to explore the eastern part of our beautiful country. I decided to come on this adventure because I love adventure. As a kid growing up, I did my own little adventure in my neighborhood then. Because I, lo I love new experiences, I love to see the road, meet new people, see new places. Everything about adventure is not always beautiful, but give you the the, 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 the zeal to want to go for more, you know, challenging things, you know. It has influenced me in a lot of ways, you know. I am this kind of person that wants to experience more things and I believe taking risks is one about, is the best thing in life. When you're not experiencing new thing. If you keep doing one thing the same way, you keep getting the same result. But when you try other ways, you get a different answer. So that's the way. The different thing about this adventure is that um, it was a very, very um, it was longer than all the other rides I have personally been on. This, this particular one had distance. It had distance and it had hellish roads. Some of the roads were hellish. And as I encourage a lot of people, you need to learn about your country. You cannot say anything authoritatively about your country except if you learn about the people, the culture and the terrain. You must, they, are, they, they go together. You cannot learn about the terrain without learning about the people. You cannot learn about the people and the terrain without learning about the culture. From Lagos to Ogun State, the challenges are usually traffic, a lot of traffic, caused by road construction and various potholes. 
between Ogun State and Ondo State, the challenge is also bad roads and a lot of traffic. Just after you go past Ijebode in Ogun State, about 40 kilometers afterwards, is terrible traffic, which is caused by road constructions. When you try to imagine the number of vehicles that travel on these roads every single day, it is mind-boggling. So when you have two lane roads with construction going on, it can be a very difficult challenge. We had to navigate this and it took us almost four hours to go past this traffic. We can do it from Ore. From Ore, right? We can, from Ore, we can go Ondo, Ife, Ibadan. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. We'll do Ore and go. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, we'll wait for you guys in Benin. The cab, uh, see you, Benin. Yeah, thank you. Carefully. <laughs> How was the road? Yeah, yes. Huh? Because of the road construction. Yeah. I have to see. I wonder why they closed an entire road. An entire road was under lock and key. We've come to Cross River twice. The first time was to Obudu. But this particular one, we didn't anticipate what we experienced on the road. But I was very happy that um, we brought the necessary vehicles that could cope with what we experienced on the road. The experience is just never the same when you travel across Nigeria because I mean, we just have so much diverse um, topographies. Onicha, first time for me in Onicha. Peace. <laughs> never, never crossed the Niger River in my life. It was beautiful. Massive river. Then, just there, I saw the first time of my life, I saw the Ochukus yeah. statue. What a beautiful trip. Journey so far, beautiful. The only thing is the traffic. Traffic is good. Yeah. Especially entering the Nisha here and there in order. But so far, so good. Having a great adventure. We're in Onicha now. And our next stop is Okibwe. From Okibwe, we have, uh, we're stopping at, um, I think, Atibwe. And then, our final stop for the night. Okay. So it was a very physically challenging trip because we went through a lot of places in, um, that I think have the, some of the worst roads in the country. We're on our road to Okigwe and we had stopped somewhere where we were just meandering and meandering and then we had this very noisy motorcycle coming. And then we stopped. He stopped when he came to us. We started talking. So 
he led us to Okigwe and said, look, don't stay in Okigwe. There are better hotels in Umwahia, which is like about another one hour from here. So we rode to Umwahia and spent the night there. Traffic alone added at least five hours to our trip yesterday. Five hours. We thought we could make it to our camper last night. But um, ultimately we had to sleep, um, sleep in Uma here. And thank God we met Iroko, the biker. Iroko, the biker. Iroko, in person. <laughs> Picked us up from the middle of nowhere. And then we followed him with his massive wheel. Massively loud bike. That bike was insane. <laughs> I was just very happy. But somehow, yeah. I was my imagine. Uh, uh, how can I see bikers in the middle of nowhere? I thought that it was my fellow bikers and protector. Uh, when I get to know, when I saw the bikes, I know, no, 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 none of them used to drive BBM. But it was fun. It was fun meeting you guys. Yesterday evening was radical. As you said, we missed, we missed our road a couple of times, you know. But eventually, we managed to. To meet him, to meet uh, this beautiful man in red, you know, and uh, we got it here, safe and sound. Now on our way to Calabar. So, bro, one love. All right, all the best. See some other time. Okay, okay. same journey. The Art of Nigeria uh, project is working on heroes and helmets. And basically the drive of that project is to encourage Nigerians, whether you're in Nigeria or you're out of the country, to celebrate our armed forces. Heroes and Helmet is a, is a project that's very close to our hearts in, in out of Nigeria. And basically what it's about is that on October 1st, we want to encourage every Nigerian, whether you're in Nigeria or whether you're anywhere you are in the world, to take a selfie with anybody who's a service personnel and do that in honor of Nigeria's armed forces and share it on social media. Hashtag it Heroes and Helmets. Where's my jacket? Like, guys, we need to roll. We can use something along the way. Yes. I'm ready. We're headed towards our camp now. So Google Maps says it's um, three hours and 18 minutes. But what does Google Maps know about Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll not be surprised if we spend five hours on the road. But um, we'll get on our bikes and be on our way soon and have fun. Thank you. Traveling in Nigeria on road can be a very challenging experience. At the same time, it can be very interesting and quite educating. You get to meet the different people, you get to experience how they feel, you get to talk to them, you get to ride or drive on roads that these people live on and drive on every single day. This is the one that eventually ban. In fact, on the on the street, you know, on the you know, like that. But we were praying to God that you guys would get there and turn back. It's totally blocked. So when Delhi was even saying that there's no way this can be the right road to be on, but we stopped and asked the villagers, and they said that that road is a federal road. That road where you where that's totally blocked yes. is a federal road. So all those trucks carrying cement and everything going back and forth have totally eliminated, destroyed, annihilated that road. The villagers said they wanted to go and call, uh, to lead a protest to the government house recently because that they, they've been reconsidering it. But I don't know how that road can be a federal road. You done, Jacob?
Stralis, that Dana is back on a strong motor. You don't know where we're going to enter. Let us just find our way to Kotak Bane. They will find their way. Are you sure? We'll wait for them in Kotak Bane. I'm telling so you. So we'll go back or we'll go here? Yeah. No, let's go this way. Okay. We'll, go, we'll follow here? Yeah, follow this way. Okay. Since they are going, I mean, smaller bikes. I mean, bike nobody, 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 the road between Umahia and Ikotekpene is a classic case of road disrepair. There are so many trucks, dozens of them broken down, some waiting for opportunities to cross, but the roads are very, very difficult, especially when it's raining. There's a lot of potholes, there's a lot of narrow roads, and there's a lot of windy roads. The rain makes them very difficult to navigate. They are very slippery. Tourism can be a money earner for us, foreign exchange. But we need to put our house in order. We need to make sure that getting from point A to point B is not difficult and stressful for people. Which is exactly what we're doing. Look at now, where we should do in a day, we're doing it in two days. God help us. My brother, it's off-road riding on road, on the federal road. We, we didn't think that we would be able to cross it, but thank God that we had bikes that were meant for those kind of terrains, so we're able to cross easily, you know? It's amazing that people go through this every day, and this is their life. It's really, it's really amazing, really amazing. Look. But there, that, this Okara tell us there's another place. Yeah, go, 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 you go. Go. I often complain about bad roof. We want the ball over this particular one. This particular one has I mean it takes yeah, well, the cooking. I mean I'm I mean I was I was way I was half my feet were in mud. Because my brother and Daily have been doing a lot of off-road training and you know they were able to stand on the bikes and balance, but I wasn't able to do that. So I almost fell in the mud. But I didn't fall. So good fair enough. Daily said I should go first so that just in case if I needed help. I did pass through, I didn't need much help, but I almost fell in the big, so first that's big body one. Horrible. Well, it was a good experience, it wasn't horrible. Very good experience. Well, I enjoyed it. Be honest with you guys, I enjoyed it. A bit of off road is always uh, welcome. But come on, it's supposed to be an express. Imagine, it's supposed to be an expressway, a proper car road. All sorts of, uh, sort of tankers. Tango men, all tankers. Yes, all sorts of goods on that road, really. All sort of goods. The road is bad. But uh, so far so good, we managed to pass through it and uh, we got here.
want tourism to get any traction in this town, we have to work on our roads and our infrastructure. You want people to visit the national resorts, the roads have to be more durable. Look at what we went through yesterday and today because we are going to um, Cross River National Park. Why would anybody on a holiday who is not an adventure rider like us, we are adventure riders. I mean, you can see the bikes and the vehicles. We have a four by four. We have vehicles that are meant for adventure. So we're on an adventure, but there's some who just want to go there and relax. Nobody in the right mind will put, on, will put himself on that road. We go this way or that way, but I can see that both of them can go. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's just start up. Small, 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 small. Start, it's, if you stand, you have more control. Gentlemen, please, really, if we need, if you want to strive on uh, and achieve more, make sure that the uh, tourists here will be welcome and uh, visit the beauty of this our country. We really have to focus on the logistics of it. It's very important. Photo bomb, photo bomb. <laughs> it's very important, very, very important. Because not everyone is having uh, the skills of passing through it. Some friends yesterday evening they were asking me to let them know how the condition of the road is and the road it is very bad. If it was not for uh, this very this kind of motorcycles, we will not be able to pass through it. In that, in all that uh, Porto Porto, like we call it back in Lagos, that deal will have been an help. With this kind of machine, so so, still okay. But with that one, maybe maybe by now will have been pick me up there. <laughs> So far, so good. Calabar Adventure 2016. We're on the way. <laughs> Well, it's not good enough, you know. The upper level of the fuel, they're not good enough. That's why sometimes the engine are hesitating. Here is written that. I now know that. Um, there are others who have raw deals when it comes to infrastructure being developed. I mean, some of the roads we passed, they are under construction. Apparently, the government is doing things about them. But it meant that before the government started doing things about them, they were in a total state of disres disrepair. Some of the roads I've been on have been on tarred roads, you know, sandy roads. You know, but I have never been on this kind of terrain before. So this particular journey is teaching me that um, there are some aspects and parts of the country that really have had a raw deal when in, when in access and um, development, infrastructure development has, uh, has been the case. So for this adventure, I'm taking that with me. I know now there are other parts of the country that need more, more, more help more touch from the government there are, there are more there are different parts of the country but this this particular part this south south parts have more challenges and that's something i'm learning learning from this 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 particular trip journey from Lagos, uh, it's not an easy one down to Calabar here, but it's a beautiful one. 
You know, we have a lot of bad roads, a lot of traffic, construction on the road, you know, that will slow you down, you know, for four or five hours more than expected, you know. Safely we got to our destination and here we are, explored the, the park, you know. It's a beautiful one. I would describe it as another experience, you know. I had a flat tire, a busted tire, but it was nothing serious, you know. We didn't have to struggle to stop the car. It was an easy thing. And we tried to get a new tire, but we couldn't get, we got a used one, a fairly used one, and we were able to manage ourselves down to a camper rather. That's Mr. Villet losing the screw. Adventure. Sell down to our camp and hopefully on our way back to Lagos we'll get a new tire. The fun part is also when we got to um, Cross River National Park yesterday and we met the, the, uh, the park's controller and we met everybody. The reception was so beautiful. But you know, when he welcomed us into his office and you know, they were welcoming us and we were meeting the people and everybody was so pleasant. I didn't remember how difficult the bad roads were because <laughs> everybody was so warm and so nice, you know, everybody. The fun part was meeting them, you know, hearing them talk about the park and hearing them talk about, you know, their aspirations and you know things like that so it was um, it was fun for me it was tiring but it was fun most of it was fun thank you so very much for your reception thank um, you right from before we even left Lagos we've been feeling your kindness <laughs> <laughs> that's nice you know, we're, we're very passionate about this country and we just want to contribute our own little bit to educating not only the world but the yeah. people, Nigerians about our assets mm. and about what we should be proud about we rode our motorcycle from Lagos through West Africa to North Africa oh, nice. and then we did seven or eight countries in Europe and all we were doing was engaging the world in conversations about our country. Yeah. Um, we know that bad press sells and it's easier to sell than good press. Mm. Um, it's not everything good about our country that is sold to the world but we have the responsibility to do that. So what we decided to do with, uh, with me, my friends and I is basically go around the country take our things that are good about us. We're trying to show the world and to show Nigerians that we don't have to travel out of the country all the time to have fun. We can have fun in our own country. We can celebrate what we have. We can be, we can, we can, instead of spending all that money traveling abroad and, you know, changing Forex that is scarce nowadays, let's spend that money home. Yeah. You know, let's, let's bring our children, you know, to these assets. Let's show them what we have. Let's celebrate what we have. That's the essence of what we're doing. And we're not, you know, we're just doing it because it's our own tiny little contribution to the growth of our country. Cross River National Park, like you know, is one of the seven national parks under the Nigerian National Park Service. Cross River National Park has been in existence since 1991, when the first decree, the decree that established the National Park Service was established, Decree 46 of 1992, yeah, was established, which is now CAP 65, LFN 2010. So we are guided by the rules and regulation in that uh, uh, re regulation of the National Park Service. And Cross River National Park, like you may know, again, is established for the purpose of protecting and preserving the only last remaining rainforest ecosystem in Nigeria. It's divided into two sectors, two non-contagious sectors, urban sector, which is 3,000 square kilometer, and then the Okwango sector, which is uh, 1,000 square kilometer. Both of the sectors are unique on their own right. 
the Okwango sector is unique because of the gorillas. The only place you can find gorilla in Nigeria, and the only remaining last species in Africa that is gorilla, gorilla, cross river gorilla. We are contagious with Cameroon. In both of the sectors, Takamanda is contagious to Oban. Okwango is contagious to, to Takamanda. This one is contagious to Korop National Park. So we have some unique uh, activities between us and uh, Cameroon. At the moment, the Cross River National Park in Nigeria and Takamanda and Korop in Cameroon are planning to have a transboundary biosphere reserve. This will now give us a larger scope of management because the, the species, the landscape is the same. So internationally, we are trying to have that collaboration between Nigeria and Cameroon. A series of meetings have been carried out and uh, that is ongoing. Cross River National Park is also one of the 25 IUCN hotspots. It is also a candidate for UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So it is one of the most diverse ecosystems in Nigeria. It has over 2,500 plant and animal species found in Cross River National Park. Over 90% of the butterflies found in Nigeria are found in Cross River. And about 33% of the continental Africa are also found in Cross River National Park. So these are some of the unique uh, nests that you can find in Cross River. And uh, we are grateful to receive you. It's like many people in Nigeria are not aware of our existence. And uh, that also give me to take me to my dream of having 10% Nigerian to visit National Park. I have in me a plan to see how we can encourage domestic tourism in Nigeria. And uh, we have worked out a way, we have worked out modalities on how we can get 10% Nigerians. That 10% Nigerian, when we talk about Nigerians are 170 million, 10% will be 17 million. This has started by having you because we can collaborate with you based on what I saw and some of the statements I had from your comments, uh, bad roads leading to the national parks, people are not aware that these parks exist and with the kind of document we are putting up, I believe that will encourage some of our youth, our Nigerians in sort of traveling to Ghana, Cameroon and uh, other Europe to visit national parks. We can spend this money here and this is exactly the challenge Nigeria is having now. We need to wake up, we need to get the right people like you, collaborate with you and see how we can move the national parks forward and provide uh, uh, earnings or uh, foreign exchange to our economy. So at the moment, our tourism facilities are not fully developed. We've just started developing them. We have some chalets, about 32 chalets. Only 12 are furnished, not to standard, but at least. And uh, we carry our researches also. Uh, at the moment, we have some, uh, we have a collaboration between Sakopan, uh, where we are translocating over 120 species of monkey from captivity to the wilds. So that is ongoing, it's going to last about 18 months. We are collaborating with some uh, whites. They are there and by the time you get to the camp, you are going to meet with them and you could also interview some of their activities, which I hope will, be, will go a long way in promoting uh, tourism, promoting research, promoting uh, activities of the National Park as we are right moment here. So you are most welcome. You. With you coming up on board like this, I think we are going to encourage you and probably even get to that higher level of National Park Service where they should know that people like you are on ground and people like you we can collaborate with and get to give National Park publicity because the, the present Honorable Minister we have now, she's, uh, she's very, very agile and uh, she really wants to see how we can reposition National Park to be able to generate money, to be able to get people involved in our activities. From what you have done, from what we have seen and from what I'm sure better thing will come out of this than what I've seen in Kainji because as you keep on going, you keep on improving. Absolutely. So I assure you that it's not going to be it's not going to be limited to this national to the unit parks level. We make sure that uh, we upgrade you guys to the national park service level even at the ministry level. I'm sure by the time the honourable minister have a look at some of these clips, she will be very, very, very impressed and she will want to meet with you guys. And from there we can take it up and see because everything is about uh, uh, commercialization, it's about privatization. Uh, government don't want to continue to be doing everything. So we need to get people who are willing to do things and then partner to collaborate and see how we can synergize and get 
looking forward to. I don't think I've been more excited about any adventure we've been on. Like I'm expi- excited now. And I told Mr. Yeah. I'm really excited about this. I think this will be our best adventure. That would be our nice. Best documentary so far. Cross River National Park is like a refuge for most species of animals that have been in extinction in other places. That is why for us in Cross River National Park, we see the park as a treasure base because we have the resource base, the very emerald rainforest that is found and the size it is only here in, the, in all of Nigeria. It is on account of a park like Cross River National Park that Nigeria sits in the Committee of Biodiversity Nations. So we have, for us, a responsibility to protect this very important ecological gene pool. Right within this camp, we have um, an overall officer who is in charge of the camp and we, it's known as the camp officer. We call him the camp officer. We have an armed man who is second in command that is called the station officer. And by my left, you can see, you watch out the yellow man on green, who is Mr. Haruna, who is the camp officer of Eroko camp. And back there, you have the station officer, Mr. Ben Anthony, Benjamin Anthony, who is um, the camp officer and this camp is made up of um, has a ranger strength of about um, a 15th ranger staff. One of their basic schedule here, why they are here 366 days for a year is just to make sure that the biological resources that are within the camp is adequately secured. In fact, um, they leave the camp, get into the wild environment and trying to check whether there is human activity, anthropogenic activities or not. And if peradventure um, a poacher or a logger is fine within the circumference of the national park, they get the person arrested, bring the person to the camp. And likewise, at the long run, forward the person right to the head office where we were yesterday for further prosecution. And uh, we saw the status of an African elephant here uh, by my right, you can see that uh, why we decided to bring this status here is to tell our visitors, whoever is coming to the camp, that this is one of the most prevalent animal species, wildlife species, that you can find within the camp. Um, it's an animal, um, the distribution is much within the Iroko axis. And from here, you can network yourself right to Cameroon. So there's a corridor, an international corridor, that is running between us, the Republic of Nigeria, to the Republic of Cameroon. And this park is linked up to another park in the Republic of Cameroon that is called Corrupt National Park. Cross River National Park is linked up to two national parks itself. One in the southern sector, which is Corrupt National Park, and the upper sector, we have the Takamanda National Park, all in the Republic of Cameroon. And like what we were told yesterday, the Cross River National Park has a total area of 4,000 square kilometers divided into two different divisions. The renounced or the most pronounced cross river gorilla is not found within the southern sector, it's found within the northern sector of the park. Being the fact that um, that area, the altitude there is very high enough that poachers cannot really assess them. The belt we, we are now is, um, is a lowland area and that's why we have uh, variations in terms of um, distribution of uh, fauna species. Then in terms of plant species, we have about 1,548 uh, plant species within this sector of the park. Uh, as we are moving, I will tell you about some species, species of plants that are therapeutic within this area as we then walk the three kilometers. Then in the upper sector, we have 1,445 plant species that you can see with me that this place is more diversified than every other, uh, the other sector of the park. I think it's just something that Nigerians should be made aware of, that we have these assets 
you know, this is our history, it's our present, and we hope it continues to be our future. Because this is what, what documents our land, who we are and where we're coming from. It's amazing that this place is over 4,000 square, square kilometers, which is bigger than Lagos State, you know. It's, it's amazing that this whole park is just biodiversity, both animal, animal life, insect life, plant life, I want to let us know that these forest environments are, have evolved six million years ago. So you can see how old it is. It's still a pristine forest that people come and appreciate. We have about 199 species of mammals that occur here, both large and small. We have about 960 species of butterflies in their different numbers that occur here. Some are endemic. We have about 38 species of avians. If you talk about the bird family, as you came in here, you had a, a vocalization this way, and that was a call of a hornbill, and one of the most prominent hornbills that you can find within this area. We are not only conserving a, a terrestrial ecosystem, we also conserve the aquatic ecosystem, which has been one of the oldest ecosystems in the world. In terms of a, a reptiles, we have about a, 20 species of reptiles, 48 species of the frog families, all abounds within this axis of the forest. One of the basic um, uh, ecological um, functions that you, the forest play is what we call water management processes. That's we have a management of water bodies, they protect you. you know, because of the forest cover, the rate of evaporation is drastically reduced. The issue of cetacean is not there. So the water we have, we use in town, and the bigger bodies of waters we have in town all have their tributaries, all my emanating, specifically emanating from the uh, Crossover National Park. And we know that water is a very essential component for as long as tourism activities are concerned. So there are lots of water bodies that surround out that we can find within the circumference of the National Parks. The joy of every journey, the joy of every adventure, is when you get to your destination hale and hearty. You sit down, you take in the environment, you've accomplished your goal, and then you're going back home. We embarked on the journey on an adventure to the Cross River National Park. We came to it, we saw it, we experienced it, we loved it. We didn't believe places like this existed in our country, but now we see, now we experience, now we film, now we can show the world and then it's time to go back home again.